for this week's clinical file, we have our patient Blaine, and Blaine is a 22-year-old male, recently fractured his right tibia and anteriorly dislocated his right shoulder. The patient has good functional stability, but presents with significant weakness in his right deltoid. The patient's physician recommends partial weight-bearing on the right lower extremity for two weeks. Which of the following assisted devices is the most appropriate so we have a rollator walker b axillary crutches c is standard walker with a right platform attachment and d is canadian aka loft strand crutches aka forearm crutches all right that goes by a few of them names so here we go you know, when we start off at the top here, and again, I have to mention this, that I'm going to take my time with this question. We're going to talk about a few things because when it comes down to a question like this, assisted device, you know, looking at the, the shoulder as well. I mean, there's just a lot of ways that the NPTE can kind of attack this area. So I want you to pull out a sheet of paper or when you get to your destination, if you're on the podcast, pull out a sheet of paper and you need to take some notes here. I, I assure you that a lot of these concepts are likely to show up on an exam somewhere, all right? Let's go ahead, jump into it like we always do. Blaine, a 22-year-old male. I'll stop there for a second. If you see ages come up on your exam, pay attention to them. 22-year-old male, young, right? Young guy, that doesn't necessarily mean this patient's able to do everything in the world, but at the same time, if you're younger, you tend to be a bit more independent or have more stability than those who are elderly. So I'm keeping that in mind. It doesn't 100% mean that because I know that there's 22-year-old males that can have, you know, C2 spinal cord injuries or that type of thing and not be able to do much. I understand that. But generally speaking, 22-year-old male, for the most part, is going to have decent stability. But let's see. It says, 22-year-old male recently fractured his right tibia and anteriorly dislocated his right shoulder. So a lot of stuff going on on the right. We got a fractured right tibia. I'll go ahead and underline that. I think that that's important there. And then anteriorly dislocated his right shoulder. So I'm just keeping those things in mind as I continue down. I'm not necessarily making any determinations based upon that. Now, it says the uh, patient has good functional stability. Ooh, I like this. They're giving me some details. So good functional stability, but presents with significant weakness in his right deltoid. All right, let's slow up there for a moment. Because I, I know this question is going to be about assistive devices and all that stuff. Can I ask you really quick? about this weakness in the right deltoid like what what nerve innervates a deltoid can you give me that what what major nerve innervates a deltoid if you're saying axillary we are on the same page i love it yes all right how about the nerve roots can you hit me with the nerve roots you should be saying c5 c6 boom all right so just a little neuroanatomy there but one little piece that i want to make known before we move on is that when a patient anteriorly dislocates their shoulder, the nerve that is most likely injured in that type of problem, anterior dislocation, is going to be, guess what nerve? The axillary. So the fact that the patient had an anteriorly dislocated right shoulder and now has weakness in the right deltoid, I'm like, hmm, that's pretty interesting because the deltoid is innervated by an axillary nerve. Axillary nerve is mostly injured in an anterior dislocation. Hmm, that's just something for you to keep in mind, all right? Now and moving forward. Now, it says in the next sentence, the patient's physician recommends partial weight bearing on the right lower extremity for two weeks. I think that's important too. We gotta make sure at the end of this, we select an assisted device that will allow for partial weight bearing. Because not all, not all assisted devices do that. And then the final uh, sentence uh, is the stem of the question says, which of the following assistive devices is the most appropriate? So that's what we're looking for, an assistive device that's most appropriate for this case. Now, for those of you on the podcast, let me go back and look at these answer choices again for you. A says rollator walker. B is axillary crutches. C is standard walker with a right platform attachment. And D is Canadian 
aka Loft Strand Crutches. So let's go down our answer choices. A, had some people select this one, Rollator Walker. Hmm. So when we think about a walker, who is it typically for? Walkers are typically for elderly patients, not necessarily always, but typically. The major reason why a person would use a walker is because their balance is, is impaired, but also their overall stability is impaired. All right. And they need the walker because they need a lot of support. The walker is one of the most restrictive assistive devices that we can give. All right. And so I'm going to give a walker to a patient who doesn't really have good stability and they have impaired uh, balance. And so the question for you is, is that what I'm looking at? And this 22 year old male, how many 22 year old males do you see moving around with a rollator walker? Not many. Right. And even in this case, it says the patient has good functional stability. And so I'm kind of like, oh, do I really want to use a walker? I know it says rollator, so at least it, it has more mobility to it. But the walker is just too much. It's too restrictive for this type of patient. I'm going to put an X next to it. Let's look at B. B says axillary crutches. Very, very attractive answer because the patient is 22 years old, is a male, you know, get around a lot easier when you're younger. So axillary crutches are obviously a very nice answer just considering the age. But the one reason I don't want to use this, the one reason I don't want to use axillary crutches is because the patient has had some type of axillary nerve damage potentially. All right. I, I know that they anteriorly dislocated their shoulder. So I know that the shoulder is already compromised, but on top of that, they have weakness in the right deltoid, which in a lot of cases, it has a problem with the axillary nerve. And that's the reason why we're seeing that. And so do I really want to put or have the patient use an assist device that's going to be putting a lot of pressure in that axillary region where I know the nerve may be impaired? No, I could potentially make the situation worse. And so I'm going to get B out. For the, for the major reason that this patient likely has some type of axillary nerve problem and axillary crutches will make this worse, all right? Now, axillary crutches are great for everything else. You know, it's, it's really nice for the fact that the patient needs partial weight bearing. Axillary crutches can help for that and decrease in that, that stress on the one leg and all that stuff. But again, not the best for this particular patient's shoulder, all right? So we got out A and B for now. Let's look at C. C's the most commonly chosen answer. I don't know what you chose. Let's take a look at it. It says standard walker with a right platform attachment. So we go back to the, the walker deal. And I told you before that walkers tend to be elderly patients, not always, but tend to be elderly. It also tends to be a patient who has impaired balance and impaired stability. All right. And so the question for you is, does a patient have impaired stability here? It says the patient has good functional stability. And so I'm like, hmm, I don't know about that walker. It might be a little bit too restrictive for this patient. But then a lot of you were like, yeah, but it says right platform attachment. And I get you. Here's my question. Why do I use a right platform attachment anyway? Like if it came up on the MPTE practice exam, wherever, why would we be using a right platform attachment? You might say, well, because of a shoulder problem. Well, not necessarily true. Actually, a platform attachment is primarily used when the patient is unable to use their wrist or hand. Maybe they have some type of hand deformity. Maybe it's uh, rheumatoid arthritis and the patient's not able to bear weight through the wrist or hand. Or maybe they have a fracture of some sort and they, they shouldn't be bearing weight through the wrist or hand. That's the major reason I would use a platform attachment. You got to think that just because the patient has a platform attachment, it doesn't mean that they're not loading the shoulder still. They're still bearing weight through that. So the standard walker with the right platform attachment, I mean, I really feel like it's a bit too restrictive for the patient's current status, them being good functional stability. Obviously, they're able to move around. Putting them with a right platform attachment, 
I, I, I guess you could say that it could help for the right shoulder and maybe decrease a little bit of stress there, but really the platform attachment wouldn't be used to make the shoulder feel better. Like that, that's not a primary reason why that's used. So I get it. It could be a right answer, but I don't know if it's the best answer. Let me at least check D. So right now, let me put a little squiggly line next to that one because I'm not 100% sure if C is right. Let's look at D as in dog. It says Canadian, a.k.a. loft strand crutches. For those of you who are not familiar with those, those are the ones that go around the forearms. Patient bears weight through uh, the wrist primarily with the handle, but they also have the forearm cuff. So it allows our patient to bear weight through the wrist hand and also the forearm. Now, Here's the thing. Do I use this for a patient who's younger? Yeah, definitely could. Do I use it for a patient who has good functional stability? Yeah, you, you, you definitely could. Now, here's the real question for you, though. Can I use lost strand crutches with a patient who has weak deltoids? Who are on the right, if they have a weak deltoid, can I use lost strand crutches? The answer to that is yes. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because a lot of you were thinking like, no, you can't use loft strand crutches unless you have good upper extremity strength. I get you. But, you know, the upper extremities, when we say upper extremity strength in the text, they're not talking about the deltoids. They're actually talking about scapular depressors. They're talking about flexors and extensors of the shoulder, which can be a bit more related to your pectorals, your lats. All right. Also, your Terry's major. I mean, these are a lot of the power muscles that flex or extend the shoulder, but also the rotator cuff can be used to stabilize as well. And so it's like, do we really need a super strong right deltoid in order for a patient to use loft strands? Absolutely not. If you look in the text, that's not even listed as a major muscle that a patient needs when using axillary or loft strand crutches. So here's the deal. If we were making the statement of, oh, you can't use loft strands because the person has a, a weak deltoid, that's not a, a, a solid rationale because the patient truly doesn't even need that, all right, to use these functionally. So bottom line, what am I saying? That loft strand crutches will be helpful with the patient who has good functional stability. They're not as restrictive as the walker, so it's going to allow them to maneuver better, move around better with better mobility. It still will assist with the partial weight bearing. The patient will be able to still do partial weight bearing even with the loft strands. And so right now, if I'm looking at a standard walker with the right platform attachment versus the Canadian crutches, listen, baby, I will always go with the least restrictive assistive device. This is a principle you need to write down. I will go with the least restrictive assistive device as long as the patient can use it safely. And in this case, there's no reason for me to believe that the patient cannot use loft strand crutches safely. That leaves us with our final answer of D as in dog. I know that got a few of you because you selected C or B or A and you're like, what? Okay, this goes back to the assisted devices, man. A lot of us haven't seen it, am I right? We haven't seen this stuff since patient care skills class or whatever they called it in PT school for you. And the only other time you've ever been using assisted devices is maybe in the sniff, you know, with your CI or Q care or whatnot. You've been doing a little bit here and there, but how many times have you gone back to the text and been like, oh, this is why I use this particular assistive device. This is the population I use it with. And this is the type of standing balance that they need. How many times have you done that? Probably not at all, right? I haven't either when I was going through this. So here's my recommendation for you. Assistive devices is a major thing that comes up. It is. It is a major thing that comes up, especially when it's related to the shoulder. What I suggest you do is look at um, Pearson and Fairchild. They're the ones who do, do uh, patient care skills. It's a textbook. It gives you a nice breakdown of when to use what assist device in what situation. But actually what I did for you on the podcast right now is I've actually looked at that textbook and I've abbreviated it for you. I made a cheat sheet that's going to go through the walker and the cane and, and the loft strands and all of that stuff for you in a cheat sheet so you can know the major stuff 
that you need to know for the MPT. Does that sound good? So for those of you on the podcast right now, I want to take you to the next level. Go into the show notes, click the link in there, and you can get your cheat sheet.